What is up guys, Eric here from Real Film Reviews bringing you another movie review, this time for the new Chris Pratt film, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is written and directed by James Gunn, just as the first one was. We have many of the returning cast members as Chris Pratt, Zoe Saldana, Batista, Vin Diesel, Bradley Cooper, and Michael Rooker, along with a few new additions. The first two things that I really want to point out about this film are the direction and the special effects. James Gunn did a phenomenal job directing this movie. It looks gorgeous. He handles all of the space sequences, and the big thing that goes along with his direction is the special effects in this movie are absolutely phenomenal. I saw this movie in 3D IMAX, to be fair, but everything looked so good. Normally, I can at least pick out a few things here and there that I'm like, that looks a little iffy, but there was really only one or two very small moments in this movie that I thought looked a little rough, and even then, they were definitely passable. This whole movie looks amazing, and when you take into account the sheer amount of effects that are in this film, it's so impressive that they were able to handle all of it and put so much detail into every single little shot. With James Gunn's direction combined with those amazing special effects, you get some really, really phenomenal scenes in this film. Now, along with that, Gunn also wrote the script for this film, and this movie is just as funny as the first, which I think a lot of people were worried about if they could kind of keep that magic that the first one had with its super funny script, and it's way funnier than even any other Marvel film, and I think this one definitely is a worthy follow-up to it. The script is really funny, but the script does something that I don't think many people People would have expected it to do, and it invests heavily in the characters and very emotional storylines. The first Guardians of the Galaxy was a great summer blockbuster. It was funny, great action, cool effects, but it didn't really invest heavily in the emotional aspects of its characters. It's one of the major criticisms that the film gets with its rewatchability is that people start to realize, hey, maybe this movie isn't as good as everyone made it out to be when you rewatch it and have seen it five times. Guardians 2, though, decides to invest in those emotional storylines. We get to see the Guardians of the Galaxy start to really become a team and a family, and we get to see different emotional bonds between other characters in the film form and break throughout the course of the movie. It was really great to watch, and I thought that Gunn actually did a really good job building up those emotional sequences and making them actually feel pretty heavy. All of the returning cast does a great job. They're all really funny. Batista, I think, as Drax, had a lot more to do in this movie than he did in the first, and he was very funny and handled it really well throughout the film. Chris Pratt's phenomenal, as always. And then Michael Rooker, actually, was the other person that stood out to me. He's really good in this movie. And the two new additions in the film of Kurt Russell and Palm Clementif, I hope I'm saying that right, the two of them were really good. Her repartee with Drax throughout the film was really funny because they both have very different ways of looking at the world, and the way that they bounced off of each other made for some of the best jokes in the whole film. And then Kurt Russell, who I'm not going to spoil, is in this movie, and you'll also notice that I didn't really give a plot summary. That's because I think the trailers for this movie gave away way too much of the story. All you need to know is the Guardians of the Galaxy are on a new adventure, and Kurt Russell is in the movie. Kurt Russell is so good. I'm not spoiling anything about his character, but I absolutely loved him in this movie. I thought he was perfect. Every character also gave gets a couple scenes here or there to sort of have their big laugh of the movie or their big emotional sequence, which I thought was really good. And throughout the film, they also do a really good job of sort of building up this universe and building it out. Because the big issue I think most people saw with Guardians was how are you going to make these people make sense in Infinity War? And I think with this movie, they were actually able to build the universe out and make it a much more wider reaching feeling film to where when they are integrated into the entire Marvel Universe later, it will make more sense. I think this movie also stepped up its action compared to the first. There were a couple sequences in this movie that did kind of make me mad because I felt like they were not showing the action when they should have because it would have been cool to see. However, they normally did that for a comedic effect and the comedic effect paid off, so I understand the decision. The movie also has really good pacing. It never felt slow, where I think in the first Guardians, since they were trying to wean you into this world because they didn't want to just drop you into it and people be like, this is weird, I'm out. They sort of had to bring the movie up at a very slow pace in the beginning, and this movie did not do that. It starts off with a bang right off the bat. The last thing that I have to mention, though, is the villain. This movie, I think, has what you could argue is Marvel's best 
villain in a movie with the exception of Loki or The Winter Soldier. With everything that this movie did right, it still had some stuff that wasn't great. For example, the amount of characters in this film makes it so some are sort of left behind. I felt that Gamora in Guardians of the Galaxy 1 was basically number two. It was Peter Quill, Gamora, and this one, she's kind of taken a hit and she's gotten knocked down that list some more. She's not in this film as much as I was expecting her to be. She's definitely in a lot of scenes, but she just doesn't have as big of necessarily a a speaking role or sort of an action role throughout the film. She's not the one that's progressing the story as much as she was in the first film, which I thought was kind of depressing, honestly, because I really think the character of Gamora is extremely interesting. The film also has sort of this odd flow to it where it has good pacing, you're never bored, but the way that the story is going feels a little all over the place at times because there's multiple storylines that we're following and sometimes it's just a little confusing and there's some really, really hard edits in the film where you really get like a cut to black and then you go pick up on a different story, but the moment where it cut to black didn't feel like a time for that to happen. It felt like we should have gotten a little bit more before you decided to transition to a different story. The climax of this movie also falls a little short. While I said earlier the villain in this movie is really, really good, I felt that the climax didn't quite live up to how cool of a villain they were. And uh, it did work. The, it made sense in the movie, but it just felt short. Like, it just didn't feel like there was enough punch there because of how good the villain was and how much the villain was built up throughout the film. My biggest issue though with it was it kind of put too much comedy in the film. I know that's Guardian's thing. The first one was so successful because of that, but this one invested so much more heavily in the emotional aspect of the story that sometimes in the movie there would be an extremely emotional moment happening and they would sort of drop a okay joke that, you know, some people would laugh at, you know, some of them I kind of smiled but it just didn't feel right. It didn't feel like the joke should be there. It felt like an unnecessary and forced comment to almost sort of break the heaviness of the scene, but I kind of want that moment to be heavy and emotional because it's supposed to be. I don't want it to fall short and just be like, oh yeah, let's make a joke right now to kind of lighten the mood so everybody's not as serious, but that moment is still extremely serious and I feel like it takes away from all of the work that went into building that moment up to be so emotional and so serious when you just break it with a mediocre joke. I'm gonna give Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 a B plus. Obviously, if you love Marvel movies, if you loved Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1, go check this movie out. I think it is a worthy successor to the first, though I think that it invested heavily in emotion, and by doing that, it sort of lost some of the more fun team antics that we get in the first film. However, I think it's a very good mix. I think both films are fairly equal. I think the first one only edges this one out slightly. If you love superhero movies, definitely check it out. There's also a ton of fun Easter eggs for future Marvel stuff. Make sure you stay after for the after credit scene. And uh, yeah, I think that as a superhero film, it definitely lived up to the hype. I think that there were just a few small issues throughout the film that sort of happened more than once and became an issue because they were so consistent. Well guys, as always, I'm Eric. If you enjoyed this video, please do like, subscribe, comment down below what you thought of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, share everything we do here on Real Film Reviews, and I hope to see you guys later.